Hey everybody, this is Sheets and we're going to be doing our contrarian betting breakdown or betting card, I guess, for tomorrow's UFC Abu Dhabi uh, uh, card. Full 13 fights and it starts at, at uh, noon Eastern, so be able to watch a uh, decent number of them, if not all of them. We'll see how that goes. But again, we approach this much differently than a lot of, than all of the betting breakdown shows I've seen. Is uh, you know we, we don't really care about what's most likely to win. What we're more what we care the most about is what everybody else thinks is most likely to win, and just kind of do the opposite. Uh, not necessarily the opposite. And again, I hate to be so cavalier about saying that, but the way it works in in wagering is that. You know, whenever you have a whole bunch of groupthink that all combines to come up with a, an opinion in a sport, which is kind of ripe with chaos, uh, I promise you this, that that result is probably the most likely outcome relative to the, you know, uh, most likely outcome, but uh, it's almost always over bet. So what you really need to figure out in this sport is what the public is on and then fade it. Now, again, it, it'd be nice also to you know, have an idea of what you're doing. In other words, like if you have knowledge of the fights and you, you, you at least see a reasonable outcome. It's not just so easy to say, okay, I don't think uh, any of these things are going to happen. So I could pick something else randomly. Although you could almost make an argument for that. Like if there's a very popular prop that is just everybody's on and you know, it's like, you know, 50% overvalued, then probably everything else is probably decent. Um, but uh, there are some things that literally have, not say literally, but some things that have no chance to win that, that uh, you really don't want to be betting. So we're, we're, we're going to go through the fights. We're going to identify what has been accepted by the public as the most likely outcome or the, the kind of cool thing to bet. And we're just never going to be betting that. And we've had some pretty good success doing it uh, over the last year or so that we've been, been applying this. And again, the reason why I'm applying this to UFC is I mean, listen, this is the exact approach I use for everything that's made me a lot of money in my life. From uh, the stock market, most specifically, I mean, trust me, uh, uh, there's very few people as suspicious and contrarian as I am about when analysts come and tell me that there's some sure thing lock or there's something that's guaranteed to happen. And my first question is, well, what do you know that everybody else doesn't? You know, and, and, and uh, that question is something that needs to be really addressed when you're dealing with any type of market. You know, if something seems that obvious, then probably everybody knows about it and everybody's betting it and it's probably overvalued. So anyway, what we're going to do is, is, is go over what everybody thinks of this fight. And then we're going to not, we're going to figure out what to bet to not <laughs> play. It. Um, so here are the rules, just for those of you that are here for the first time, uh, we are going to be betting one thing on every single fight on the card. And that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second thing, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight on the card, and that is not the best money management system in the world either, and we don't care. Um, and for us, one unit is $180, 10 times high, good luck. And uh, again, I do think it's healthy where, you know, if you're going to announce that you're going to be betting something, then you actually say how much money you're betting. Um, I know people are into the units and all that, and I know everybody's bankroll is different, but I still think, I don't know. I think it's it's good to know if someone's actually saying they're betting on something. Let them if you're going to open up their big mouth and say they're betting it. Let them open up their big mouth a little more and say how much. And that's that's my my philosophy. And the other thing, which is kind of neat, is that uh, we are going to presume that we are going to lose every fight on this card until the main event. Um, so in the main event, we are intentionally going to be betting something that's getting at least what do we have? Thirteen fights on the card, so at least twelve to one. Uh, and that's always fun. And we actually gotten pretty close to nailing those a couple of times. Um, haven't quite gotten one yet, though, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. Um, anyway, let's just get started. First fight of the night, or the day, I guess, uh, Cedric Dumas versus Dennis Tarulian. And, man, slowly but surely, like, all kinds of love is coming in on, on, on Dennis Tarulian that nobody, all of a sudden, Cedric Dumas is the most hated man in America or in Abu Dhabi. They're saying he's boring. They're saying he's, his, you know, his wrestling's okay, but uh, Dennis Tullulian is going to be bringing the pace on him and, and things of that nature. And I'm hearing Dennis Tullulian by finish and things like that. And if, in fact, Cedric Dumas is going to get this win, it's going to be because he was, you know, just laid on him like he did Cody Brundage and took, you know, a very technical approach. 
So what you can't bet is Dumas by decision. What you also cannot bet is Dennis uh, Tullulian by finish, okay? So you have two choices if you want to be contrarian. You can either go Dennis Tullulian by decision, which is certainly reasonable, or some type of Cedric Dumas by finish. Um, and I will say this, that the, the, the ultra contrarian play is definitely Tullulian by finish because, excuse me, by decision, because nobody believes this is possible. They think he's going to go out recklessly and do whatever. But I'll tell you that like his other fights, I mean, he's had short notice a few times. Maybe he does have decent cardio. I don't know. So it's going to be, if you really want to get extravagant, it's either going to be Tullulian by decision or maybe Dumas in like round one. Okay. So what do you think is better, by the way? What do you think is a better, uh, bigger line? Dumas round one or Tullulian by decision? I guess whichever one is bigger, that's when we're going to bet. And I bet it's going to be Tullulian by decision. Let's see. First, winning method. Dumas inside the distance. Uh, looks like, well, it's plus 130. What about round one? Uh Round props. Dumas round one plus 300. Tullulian by decision plus 700. Let's go. Come on, man. That has no chance. Just for us. All right, let's uh, move on. We have Jai Herbert versus Rolando Bedoya. Here we go. The, the ultra popular underdog play of the season. Rolando Bedoya against kind of older Jai Herbert. Jai Herbert's been very, very boring um, and hasn't really done all too much. Rolando Bedoya, just he he's had that great performance against against Chaos Williams. Uh, was it Chaos Williams or yeah, I think it was Chaos Williams. Not Khalil Marouch, it was Chaos, Chaos Williams. Uh, and people thought he should have maybe should have won that fight. He is just the ultimate popular underdog. There's no way you're going to be playing. Um, it's going to be Herbert. And one thing that people are not expecting is Herbert to finish him. Um, so that's what we are going to be playing. Let's see. Jai Herbert inside the distance. Now we could play by sub. That would be kind of fun. Herbert by sub is plus 1,200. Hmm. Or if Herbert just inside the distance, that's plus 300. Boy, this is what we're going to do. I was about to, to check the board and see if Herbert has actually gotten a submission. Let, let, let's, let's, let's take a look at his career. So if he's gotten multiple submissions in the last several years, we're going we're gonna to take a shot at this one. Herbert, let's see. Drew Ludwig Klein, that's pretty good. Decision was Taporia. Got subbed. Yeah, so that's he hasn't had a sub since 2016. So we're just but just in case, we're gonna keep that on the board. So we will play Herbert inside the distance. No one is doing this for 180. And we'll we'll end up putting stake all singles at the end of this. Well, we can put this in. All right, moving on, we have Victoria Dudakova versus Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes is a dog. She's got cardio and all of that good stuff. Um, Dudakova got away with kind of a tough, uh, kind of a close decision. Sam Hughes is yet going to be another one of these kind of sort of popular underdogs here. Um, so we, we definitely can't play her. It's just a question of do we want to play Dudakova to finish? And I will say this is that you know, Sam Hughes is pretty close to getting finished by Amarim in that first round. Um, so I think Dudakova by sub is probably really live here. Let's just take a look and just make sure that she actually can do this. Let's see, Dudakova. Let's see if she has any subs on her record. Yeah, so she's got a couple of subs on her record. Uh, she also has a KO, but that wasn't a KO really. She, she just, you know, Nunez just got hurt. So we're going to try this. We're going to play Dudakova against the dog, against the person with the cardio, just Dudakova by sub. It's a winning method. 
plus 650. Give me a break. Let's go. Moving on, uh, we have uh, Guram Kutaladze versus uh, Jordan Vucenic. Um, um, Vucenic has actually gotten a little bit of love here in the last like couple of days. Um, Guram, uh, he was he was. I mean, I want to re review this a second. I want to get I want to get the fights. I want to get the fights correct here. So. Was he the one that, that had Elvis Brennan and lost? No. I get him confused. Yeah. So he came in. First of all, he, he won a split against Mateus Gamrot. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, this that's a big, big win. You know, and then lost Demiris Magulov in a split. Uh, then Elvis Brenner, he had him. And then he just kind of like ran out of gas or whatever. But I don't know about this. I think this is could be sort of, I don't want to say easy, but got a whole bunch of KOs here. It's it, we're gonna do something with uh we're gonna do something with Kudalanze. I mean, it's not gonna be a sub. He doesn't really take people down. So we could play him KO or something like that. Let's see. Uh winning method. Kudalaze by KO plus 275. Yeah, that looks good to me. Again, we're just really fading as these pop their rubber dogs this week. So we're going to try that. Uh, Shamil Gazia versus Dantel Mays. Now, on the other hand, this is an underdog which nobody was picking. You know, you have Gazia who's probably just going to either, probably going to go for the takedowns and get them against Dantel Mays. Um, he he really just almost quit against against Rosenstruck, but people are really looking at that as a positive for some reason that he was able to take all the punishment for like five you know five five rounds or four rounds before he finally just gave up. And he did get a second round KO of Martin Budai, so uh, yeah, I, I get it, I see it, but I still haven't seen anybody take Dante Mays even as plus the three hundred. So we're we're gonna. We're, we're going to be on it. Um, Don Telmez plus 225. Okay, moving on. We have Mohamed Yaya versus Cowie Fernandez. I, I, Mohamed Yaya does not belong in the UFC, I was told. Okay, why? Because he lost one fight to, to, to Trevor Peak? I mean, I, I don't know about this. Uh, all of a sudden, Cali Fernandez. I mean, all the guy does. I don't say all the guy does is lose, but I mean, what what, is, what has he ever done? He has a loss to Sardinia, whoever that is, by decision, and a couple of first round KOs, which is good. Then, listen, it's not bad. A split to Mark Diacasey, um, Bruno Rodriguez by decision, a couple of wins here. I mean. I guess. I guess. I guess he's fine. The only problem is I've been hearing all week that the line is too wide. Um, so we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna have to take Fernandez just because I've heard the line is too wide, which is a little annoying because uh, I really don't want to take Fernandez, but we'll, 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 we will play him. So Yaya is pretty low volume. So I imagine that Fernandez is going to probably end up just winning by decision, I guess. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. Fernandez by decision plus two fifty. So this is this is probably a bad bet. All right, there, there's not not a lot of contrarianism in this. I just I'm not feeling it. But because of our 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 rule that we have to bet everything, we are going to go ahead and and take a shot. Uh, again, this is definitely the fight you're supposed to pass. Well, they're probably probably supposed to pass all these fights, but. Um, uh, Fernandez by decision is just kind of fun. All right, uh, Amaz Murzakhanov versus Alonzo Menafield. Um, you know, Murzakhanov has a bunch of KOs. He's very, very fast. Alonzo Menafield, he has a lot of power. And in his last fight, he came, went rushing in against, uh, what's his name? Against, uh, Carlos Olberg and got flatlined. 
So this is obviously going to be some kind of banger where someone's going to get knocked out. So what we're going to do is either play someone by decision or uh, or the fight just goes to decision. Um, I want to take a look at a couple of things here. I want to see if these guys can actually win by decision. Alonzo Menafield, yeah, he's got, he's got a submission win. Excuse me, he's got a decision win over Justin Jacoby. He's got a decision win over Ed Herman. So, I mean, he could do it. I mean, Menafield could do this by decision. And, and Raza Khanoff, he's got decisions, but he's got mostly KOs. This weird feeling that Menafield's going to get takedowns and win a decision somehow. This is this is like an atrocious, but we're going to do it anyway. What, what's he going to be like? Plus a thousand? Let, let me look at one more thing here. If if I really want it, if I'm going to be really stupid, it might as well be ultra stupid. What what, what is Menafield by sub? If you get a sub against Jimmy Crude, and you got a sub here, I mean, this is going to be a million to one. Let me ask you this, or ask myself this. Has Murzakhanov ever lost by sub? I mean, he has no losses. So, I mean... <laughs> ah, screw it. This has got to be a million to one, right? Let's, let's look at some of these. Right. Fight lines, uh, popular. Fight props that we're looking at. Round props. Winning method. Okay. Menafield by sub is plus 900. Menafield by decision is plus 550. Boy. What, what is, what's a better bet? Because it's, it's definitely going to be one of them. Boy, it's a lot to ask for him to get a decision. In Russia, I mean, excuse me, in Abu Dhabi against this guy. So why don't we, why don't we, why don't we try this? Why don't we try Menafield by sub plus 900? This way we don't put it in the judge's, judge's hands. I see this. All right. Uh, we're all, oh, by the way, just if you haven't figured it out, we're definitely going 0 and 12. All right, so Joel Alvarez versus Elvis Brenner. This is definitely going to be a banger. That's the first thing I've heard. Second thing is that uh, Elvis Brenner's got that dog in him. That's another thing that I've heard. All action fight. So someone's winning by decision. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, first, for the fight itself to go the distance is plus 165. That's it? Well... Let's take a look at winning method here. Alvarez by decision plus 450. Elvis by decision is plus 360. So Alvarez by decision is, is, is wider than Brenner by decision. Okay. Alvarez by decision plus 450 for 180. Mackenzie Dern versus Lupe Godinez. Uh, so this one, unfortunately, I have to say, this is not... I mean, it's contrarian, but but I've been wanting to bet this all. All right, this is this is ridiculous. So you have, uh, what's her name, Mackenzie Dern. If she if she wins, it's going to be by sub. So you can't bet that. I promise you, that's what everybody's doing. If you're betting Mackenzie Dern, it's going to be because you're betting her by sub. And I agree. I don't think there's any way she wins either, except by sub. But the the line is so juiced that it's just terrible value. Um, However, the other side, you have Godinez, who I've just heard has terrible fight IQ. Great. Um, but her inside the distance line is like ridiculous. I mean, let's look at this. This is this is like almost insane. You have let, let's look at some of these. Uh winning method. Lupe Godinez inside the distance is 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 plus nine hundred. I mean, is that a joke? I mean, Mackenzie Dern has um, gotten just flatlined on the feet 
two fights in a row. And Lupe Cadenas is pretty good on the feet. Not to mention the fact that Mackenzie Dern is all too willing to accept takedowns. And if that's the case, that then a su submission is always in play for Cadenas. And I know that the submission, everybody's expecting it to be from, from Dern, but whenever you have scrambles, anybody can get submitted. So I, I don't know. I, I think this is ridiculous. So we're going to play Lupe inside the distance plus 900. I mean, it's almost, it really does almost feel too easy, but no one's ever, no one else has suggested it. I don't know what to say. All right. Um, moving on. Tony Ferguson then versus Michael Chiesa. So the line is too wide. That's what I've heard. So can't bet Ferguson. <laughs> um, Chiesa is going to be going for takedowns, I guess, and smothering him and either getting a sub or winning by decision, I guess. So these are the two things you really can't bet. The only thing I can I can do here is play Chase if I knock out if, if I want to be contrarian. Or I guess just play just play Ferguson somehow. Um or we could play Chiesa in the first round. These are the only things you can really do. Um let, has Chiesa ever finished anybody? That's that's the question. I mean, by KO. If he has, I mean I'll give it a shot, but let's just see. I really doubt it. Decision, 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 submission. Submission, submission. Literally no care. So we can't do that. Um, I'll tell you, if there was a fight to pass again, it, it would be it would be this one as well. Just everybody's kind of on top of this. Let's just let's just come up with something though. Um chase around. Chase around one plus two seventy five. That's actually not bad. One of these rounds has got to be pretty good, right? I mean, Chase by sub is going to be like really popular. Right? Let's, let's, let's double check that uh, method of victory. What is it going to be? Plus two hundred or something? If that plus one twenty, and that's ridiculous. And plus decision plus one thirty. Not nothing is good here. Um. All right, so we'll, we'll we'll we will go with case around two. We'll go back. We remember we used to do a bunch of those. We should probably go case if I sub round two, right? If we're going to do this, I mean, he's not knocking him out. A winning method. Let's see specifically round props by sub round. Wait, fight props. Where is this? Here it is. Chiesa by sub round two plus five hundred. Is it worth it for the fifty cents to get the sub when fluke knockout? Which no, we're we're gonna we're gonna do this. Chiesa by sub round two. Uh, okay, moving on. Marlon Vera versus Davison Figueredo. I mean, I just I, I can't freaking help myself with this with this with this pick. Okay, it's it's every single time, and and we we've been right the last couple. So what people are saying is this: is is you play is Martin Marlon Vera is a slow starter, so he always gives up round one. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is wait until. Marlon Vera wins round one and then, excuse me, wait till Marlon Vera loses round one, then bet on it. Okay. Without thinking that the line already reflects this. Okay. So what I suggest, and I'm going to do it again, is this, and this is going to be a conditional bet. So you, I'm not going to put this in now is that if figure, if, if, if in your opinion, I guess, if Figueredo wins round one, then bet Figueredo anyway. Okay. You'll probably have to give some odds or whatever, but I guarantee you that's good value. Okay. And you don't have to bet him by sub later or whatever it is. Although I do think that's probably a pretty good bet here. Um, but that that's my advice on this fight is wait to see round one. And if Figueredo wins round one, then then bet on him. Okay. Don't 
go for that Vera after round one thing. It might be the case. He's a slow start and he picks up the steam, but that's already been factored into the line and that playing that is, is bad value. So we will take Figueroa, F F Davison Figu Figueroa, Figueroa? Why well, can't I cannot pronounce this? Figgy after round one and just lay the minus 200 or, or whatever it is. But I do think that that Figueroa by sub is probably a pretty good, pretty good look here. Should we bet that? Let's look, you know, let's bet it because I did promise I'd put something in. Uh, winning method. Figueroa by sub is plus 1200. All right, that's fine. All right. Uh, didn't he just win by sub in his last fight? Good enough for me. All right, but don't forget to do that other thing also. Shara Magomedov versus Michael Oleksiychuk. Um, fixed fight for Magomedov, I've heard. Uh, the idea is that the only person you're supposed to bet against him is someone that can really take him down. And Olazaychuk is a pure striker. So uh, it's basically a fixed fight for Magomedov in Abu Dhabi, and he's going to probably win by KO or volume-based decision. So we're going to go take Olazaychuk. Olazaychuk plus the 210. And I don't know how he's going to win, so I'm not going to get cute about that. All right, so I think... We've done all 12 fights. So let's, as they say in Family Feud, let's review the terrible answers that your partner gave to us. Dennis Tool hit by decision. I, I have to laugh even look at this one. Jai Herbert by KO over over Bedoya, the popular underdog. Are you kidding me? Dudakova by sub over the dog Sam Hughes, who has unlimited cardio. Good luck. Uh, Gudalaze by KO. Again, that's not the greatest in the world, except for the fact that that Vucenic has just become kind of a popular underdog here. Uh, Don Telmez plus 235. I don't know what he's actually playing him, so it's going to be one of us. Fernandez by decision. This is the one that's kind of a pass, um, but I I played him plus 250 win by decision for no reason. Metafield by sub I really like. Uh, everybody's just kind of expecting you know, it's either going to be a Metafield KO or, or a Marissa Kanoff KO. Um, I, I think the Metafield by sub is, is very – is very, very live here. Uh, Alvarez by decision in the banger. Uh, I don't know how you could bet anybody by decision in this fight. Um, so we're going to lose that one, I guess. Godinia's bad fight IQ. I guess the only person who can get a sub here is uh, is 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 Dern. I don't know. We'll see. At plus 900. Chiesa by sub round two. Again, nothing else to do here, I guess. So I thought plus 500 was reasonable. Figgy by submission plus 1200. That's kind of a joke as well. But again, the real bet is, is to wait till after the first round and then lay the odds on Figueredo because everybody's going to be doing the opposite. Uh, fixed fight for Magomedov. So we're going to take all his H up, obviously. Just like the fixed fight last week. Remember, we did this last week. The, supposedly the fixed fight for Molly McCann against Bruno Brazil. That was funny. Uh, anyway. All right, last fight, we have to get our, all of our money back here on these terrible bets. So Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Numagomedov. So we have to do something that's sort of contrarian, but that is also 13 to 1. It's going to be tough. But I think I know what I'm going to do. Uh, so what, what, have, what have we learned? What have we heard about this fight? Um, I mean, Umar is just kind of the man. He's, he's got the better wrestling. Probably has the better striking. And it's the only thing is that Umar just kind of got rocked in his last fight. Um, so he does, yeah, maybe he's, he's vulnerable somewhat. But I've heard, I've heard the case made for, for Sanhagen a little bit as an underdog. I, I mean, I have. I haven't exactly heard how he's going to win, but uh, I've heard it. So I think that what we have to do is either some kind of, of Sanhagen inside the distance thing, whether it be around, whether it be by sub, something like that. Or we have to just pick our favorite round for Umar. Like, I think people are, 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 are definitely convinced this fight's going over. So if anything, maybe Umar by a specific method in a specific round. So maybe like, Umar by KO or Umar by sub in like round one or like round two or something. That could do the trick. 
So before we look at the odds, right? Let's let's not get let's let's first figure out what we're going to look for. Some Umar early round finish, or any kind of Sandhagen finish. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the odds here. All right. So uh, fight lines, a winning method. Let's well, first of all, Sandhagen by sub is plus sixteen hundred. That's 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 pretty fun. But he doesn't really sub anybody. He gets on top and then kind of goes to work. Um, so that's probably not going to really work here. How about round props? Umar round one plus 600. I mean, you can play any of these rounds and be well within your rights here. Round two is plus 850. Well, let's get a little bit more funky. Um, so Umar KO round one plus 1600. All right. Umar by sub in round two is plus 1200. That, that gets our money back. That's actually not bad. Maybe we'll do that. Umar by sub round two plus 1200. I mean, we're going to need it, right? All right. Umar by sub round two. Now has 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 Sanhagen ever been subbed? I guess that, that doesn't really matter. So all these guys don't have that many losses. I just want to make sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure that he's get he gets subs, but let's, let's just make sure about that. What's he by by decision by the public plus three hundred? Take a look. Um, decision KO, decision sub, sub, sub. Decision subs. Okay, so yeah, this looks good. Um, all right, so that'll do it. I, again, I can't put these bets in until uh, I log off of Zoom, so we'll wait on that. But we are playing all these things, and uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.